Fox. You know, they helped carry the light of Hawaii around the Pacific, and the journey of the Hiki, Hiki Analia, the sister ship of the Hokulea, has finally returned home. And on board this special canoe, the next generation of Polynesian navigators. And I gotta tell you, these guys are very modest, but I'm so proud to have them standing next to me. And uh, Jason, Kaimalu, and Austin. Now, you guys, in your mid-20s, you've traveled through the Pacific, but first of all, you're back home. Talk about, real quickly, what we have right here in front of us, because we've spread out an amazing little navigation feature that you guys use. Talk about that. Uh, so this is the Star Compass um, that was created by Uncle Nanua Thompson, which wow. is a hybrid off of what was taught to him by Papa Mao Piailu from Satawal. And um, the way this works is that we are on the canoe in the middle of the compass. Uh -huh. And as we're navigating, we imagine all of these houses on our horizon. So really, the compass is with you at all times, and it's on your horizon, and it's, and it's in your mind. Wow. Hey, please, talk about that, the houses in your mind. I mean, we, we, you get this, you memorize it, but you fold this up, you're out in the middle of the ocean without any land or any, and you and you got to picture this in your mind's eye. Is that the correct way to say exactly. it? Exactly. That's, that's exactly what we do. Um, and so we memorize where the stars and the moon and the um, sun rise and set on the horizon, uh -huh. and we orient the canoe um, within that compass using those reference points. And so we kind of wow. extend these houses out to the horizon um, and and we, we can pick various points on the canoe um, to line up different ah uh, to like line it up yeah to line ah. up different celestial bodies or, mm -hmm. or different swells um, with in accordance to where we want the canoe to go so literally you're using not only the wind but the 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 map here but also the swells of the ocean Austin, can actually you talk about that the swells and how you guys use that in navigation sure exactly so to, two of the most critical times of the day are sunrise and sunset. Oh. So, for example, when we were coming back to Hawaii, we were aiming north. We were trying to aim our canoe north. So we asked, what happens every morning? Well, the sun will rise, and we'll get a fix and say, okay, if the north is right in front of us based on where the sunrise is, the next thing we'll do is look for the swell. So especially when we got the northern hemisphere, the swell is mostly out of our northeast mm -hmm. quadrant. So even throughout the day, as the sun gets too high to use it, the motion of the canoe, we try and keep it the same way. And anyone, even if you're not that experienced in boats, you can tell the difference between going like this over a wave or sideways right. very easily. So we use that combination to hold a hold a direction. <sighs> That's amazing. I mean, if you're at home listening to this, these guys are using these skills and techniques to navigate across thousands of miles of ocean. I, I gotta ask you, were you ever scared? I mean, did you ever doubt or, or not have confidence in your skills? In, in the in the place we call the doldrums, um, starting at about th three north to about nine north. Um, is where we came across a patch of ocean where we had no stars. Mm -hmm. um, some days you couldn't even see the sun. Wow. And at one point even, the, we had four swells that were all opposing each other from four different directions oh that would directly opposite each other. So like you were saying before, and you're not arcing like this, you're kind of going all the way around. Well, right. What did you guys do? Um, I think we all had a night where we would actually, we actually decided that the best decision to do is to shut down the canoe mm. and wait for um, what we, dis until we could find um, a marker to give us uh, a direction. So imagine that, you shut down your canoe and we're just waiting out there in the middle of the ocean for the conditions to get better. <laughs> yeah, wow. wait for the sun or for the moon. <laughs> I gotta ask you, you know, Jason, coming back and bringing this knowledge, I was saying before, uh, as a proud father that's learning, and my six-year-old son comes back every day, and you guys are on the satellite phone, you're teaching the students, what's that like for you to now be the teacher and carry on the lessons to the younger generation? It's quite a trip, it's a real honor and privilege to be in that position, um, and it's great to to know that the students of Hawaii are taking interest in the voyage mm -hmm. and what we're actually doing is, is mattering to the next generation. It's great to see the stoke on all the um, elementary kids' faces and they're the ones who ask the most questions when they come for canoe tours. Mm -hmm. It's great. They they can't not ask enough questions, which is awesome. You get to the well, the high school age and like it's crickets. Yeah. yeah. But the little guys are like, what do you guys do? Like, how do you guys go to the bathroom? Um, everything. All the questions. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's so much fun to see just that enthusiasm mm -hmm. from the next generation because that's really what uh, this voyage is for, is getting those guys um, you know, excited about this and, and engaged with the void and so that hopefully one day they can, you know, come onto the canoe nice. and carry on on this tradition. Well spoken, Jason. And I gotta ask, Austin, what's mm -hmm. the plan next for the Hikianalia? Because the Hokulea, we're still following them, mm -hmm. but you guys are doing some things, you're gonna do the islands. What's next for the boat itself? Yeah, sure. So the Hokulea is currently on the Great Barrier Reef doing a bunch of science and connecting with schools over there. So we brought the Hikianalia back to train maybe the next wave of crew members as well as engage with a lot of people from our science community. That's really the focus of this, of this canoe. So 
Right now, they're going to be heading to the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, maybe to Nihua Atoll, and then eventually we're going to set up a bunch of science expeditions throughout the summer to engage all of our college community and and schools while they're off and have time to, to come and meet with us. Awesome. Well, again, thank you guys for coming in. Really, I'm so honored and blessed to have you guys here. You guys are so modest. But please, get out there, support the Polynesian Voyaging Society. This is it right here. The Voyagers <laughs> of the... These guys are all in their 20s, and they've done things that I've never even dreamed about doing in life. But they're sharing the lessons with our kids, our Kiki. Mahalo, you guys. I, I want to shake oh, your hands. You. No, seriously, you thank guys you. are awesome. <laughs> thank you so much for all that you've done. We'll have all that information on our website, and again, how you can support this wonderful journey. Now, Coming up a little bit later, ladies, again, not these guys here, but Trini, uh, she sits down with Miss Emma Wo, Hawaii Miss USA. Now, she's actually going to be giving us some makeup tips. That's right, favorable beauty tips about hair, makeup, and all that she has on her blog. And maybe I can actually get a selfie with her a little bit later. So we'll have that coming up in Living 808.